بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد the author he mentioned رحمه الله تعالى in the chapter he has entitled باب الجامع the all inclusive chapter باب الجامع containing many different narrations that touch on many different subjects, clarifying many different rulings and regulations, all of them related to, all of them related to as salah We have read some of that which the author he has mentioned, and we continue. عن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال ما ناسي صلاة ما ناسي صلاة فليصليها إذا ذكرها لا كفارة لها إلا ذلك وقيم الصلاة لذكري. The author he mentioned a narration of Anas ibn Malik and رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that whoever forgot a prayer, whoever forgot a prayer, then let him pray it whenever he remembers. Then let him pray it. Let then let him pray it whenever he remembers it. There is no expiation for that prayer except for that, meaning except for to pray it whenever one remembers. And he mentioned the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal as an evidence for this. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa aqim salata li dhikri and establish the salah li dhikri. The people of knowledge they have mentioned that this word here li dhikri for my remembrance, yani that it has two interpretations. And one of them is what is understood in the evidence here and establish the prayer at my remembrance or whenever whenever you remember me. So whenever the person, if he had forgotten, whenever he remembers Allah, he'll remember the salah. He'll remember the, he'll remember the salah. So likewise, a person who forgot to pray, whenever he remembers Allah, he'll remember, he'll remember that he had a prayer to pray. The other interpretation of this verse and uh, it's understood likewise any for my remembrance, meaning the purpose of the prayer is to be established for the remembrance of Allah, for the remembrance of Allah. But in any case, here we see that the one who forgets a prayer, and then he remembers, then he will pray it. Then he will pray that prayer, and that's the expiation for that prayer. And there's no expiation except for this. And the author, he says, what do you Muslim in? And in one wording by Al-Imam Muslim, مَنْ نَسِيَ الصَّلَاةً أَوْ نَامَ عَنْهَا and And whoever forgot a prayer, or he slept on the prayer, and in the time passed, then uh, the expiation for that is to pray it whenever, whenever he remembers. To pray it whenever he remembers. So we see here that there are a number of issues related to this, to this narration. The first one we see that sleeping. Uh, and forgetfulness is uh, a legislated excuse for missing an obligation. Sleeping and forgetfulness is a legislative excuse and yani for, for missing an obligation. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, فَلْ يُصَلِّهَا إِذَا ذَكَرَهَا But he has to pray it whenever he remembers. So the obligation did not fall off, but the fact that the time passed and he did not fulfill that obligation in the proper time, he's not held accountable for that because of forgetfulness, because of forgetfulness, or because of sleep, or because of, of sleep. So the sin is removed from him, and he's not held accountable for that sin and that error, but he must fulfill the obligation, and the obligation remains. And the obligation remains. And this is clear with regards to the issue of forgetfulness. رَبَّنَا لَا تُؤَخِذْنَا إِنَّا سِينَا أَوْ أَخْطَعْنَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned, uh, and we just heard in, in Salat al-Maghrib, Alhamdulillah, the Imam recited those verses. Oh, our Lord, do not take us to account. And he hold us to account for our sins whenever we forget or make a mistake. Whenever we forget or make a mistake, when we do something incorrect unintentionally. So this is the case here with regards to forgetfulness. That, that issue is clear. Uh, as for with regards to sleeping, sleeping on the prayer, sleeping on the prayer, the origin is that if a person he were to sleep on the prayer, he's not held accountable likewise. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Rufia al-Qalamu an thalath, that the pen has been lifted from three. 
and a naimi hatta yastayqidha and from them the one who's sleeping until he wakes was sabi hatta yakbura and aw yahtarim and the child until he reaches the age of puberty wal majnun hatta yufiqa and the one who has lost his sanity until he regains his sanity so therefore the one who is sleeping if something happened while he's sleeping and he left off an obligation the because of his sleep he's not held accountable he's not held accountable and uh, this is the case here and has been narrated by Abi Qatadah radiyallahu anhu that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said laysa fin nawmi tafritun that sleep and sleep there is not negligence ne- negligence negligence is not because of sleeping inma tafritu ala man lam yusalli hatta yaji'a waqtu as-salat al-ukhra but negligence is only negligence is only on the one who did not pray until the time of the next prayer came and intentionally this is this one is considered negligent so the one who's sleeping he's not considered negligent and, and then he said uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa man fa'ala dhalika fal yusalliha fa man fa man fa'ala dhalika fal yusalliha hina yantabihu laha and then whoever did that meaning whoever uh, slept on the prayer then let him pray whenever he wakes up and whenever he realizes that he slept on the prayer so this is the case the origin is there's no negligence and a person is not held accountable for that but the people of knowledge they clarify this is the case for the one who, who unintentionally slept on the prayer as for the one who purposely slept on the prayer this has a different ruling and this is not allowed and some people they'll do that and they will set the alarm clock for example intentionally intentionally for the time they go to work and that's after the sunrise for example and they will go to sleep with the intention of waking up after the sunrise this is not allowed and this is not permissible and this person here he has no ruther he has no excuse this person here has no excuse for the, one of the, the the conditions for the excuse of sleeping to uh, be accepted is that the person he will not go to sleep with the intention of not getting up in time la yubayyit an he will not go to sleep with the intention of taking the, the prayer out of its time. And some person like this, for example, if he had the intention, he set his alarm to wake up, and he went to sleep with the intention to wake up after Fajr, and after the Shuruq, and he just before he goes to work and pray. Like this, he had the intention to do that, and this one he's not excused. And this one he's not excused, whether he has delayed the prayer on purpose. Whether he has delayed the prayer on purpose. And, and this is a major sin. Uh, and this is a foul intention to have this intention and to, to know the time is going to, 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 to pass and to intend to miss it on purpose. And likewise, the one who uh, misses the prayer because of sleeping but out of negligence from himself. And he didn't take the means to wake up. He didn't, he didn't take the means to wake up. Or if he knows he's a hard sleeper or if he knows that uh, he's going to bed late, for example, and he is not taking the means to wake up, he's not setting an alarm. And he's relying upon this, that whoever f- slept on the prayer, he will be excused because of his sleeping, and he will take advantage of that. Likewise, he's not excused. Likewise, he's not excused. Rather, he has to take the means. He has to take the means. So if a person, he took the means, he set the alarm clock, or he asked somebody to wake him up, and, and then on top of all of that, he slept through the prayer, or something happened, and while he's sleeping, he turned the alarm off, he's extremely tired and didn't realize, for example, or, or whatever the case may be, or maybe the alarm clock did not go off for him and he did not wake up until the shuru came, then this person, he's excused. He's excused from, from, from blame and there's no sin upon him. He has an excuse because of sleeping. And then after that, the obligation remains upon him and he'll play and, and he will pray whenever he wakes up, whenever he wakes up. So this is the case with regards to the issue of the one who slept. And not, sleeping is not an excuse in all, in all circumstances. It's only an excuse for the one who took the means. It's only an excuse for the one who took the means. As for the one who did not take the means, where he intentionally delayed it on purpose, and he went to sleep with the intention of delaying the prayer from the proper time, then this, this one he's not excused. This one he's not excused. In any case, the obligation remains. And likewise, from the benefits of this narration, uh, it's uh, clear that it's an obligation to make up that missed prayer and to make it up immediately. And to make it up immediately. And this is from the statement of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, فَلْ يُصَلِّهَا then let him pray it and he must pray it the lamb here is lamb al-amr lamb al-amr this is a command that he must pray it whenever he remembers it so therefore he must hasten to fulfill that obligation so therefore he must hasten to feel to fulfill that obligation there's an issue here with regards to uh, making up that prayer 
and he and he it, it could be uh, performed. A, per, a person maybe he will sleep until the time is finished entirely, or maybe he will sleep until the very last moment. Maybe he'll wake up just moments before sunrise. For example, he'll wake up just moments before sunrise. Or if he slept after Asr, for example, or after, or after Dhuhr, or close to Asr, and he did not wake up for Asr, all the way until almost uh, time uh, for, uh, for the setting of the sun. Then uh, the issue here is if he performed uh, one raka before the sun rises, or one raka before the sun sets, then he has caught the prayer in his proper time, and he's excused. So there's an issue here with regards to the prayer. And there's some more vocabulary words that we can learn. We have the issue of al-ada. Al-ada'u. Min ad yu addi. And the ism masdar is al-ada. Al-ada. It means performance. But here with regards to the chapter of salah, it means performing the prayer in the proper time. Performing the prayer in the proper time. The one who performed the prayer in the proper time, his prayer is performed ada'in. Ada'in. And then we have uh, what is called the opposite of that, which is al-qada. Al-qada. Min qada yaqdi. Iqdi qada'in. Qada here, and the word qada has many meanings. But here in the chapter of salah, it means to make up the, the prayer. The, to make up the prayer. And in the, in the issues of ibadat, in general, the qada, the, qada, the people of knowledge, they mention, ma'fu'ila ba'da waqtihi al-muhaddadi lahu. Yani min al-ibadat, the actions of worship that are performed after its specific time. And he, the, the time for that worship passed. And now they have to perform that act of worship. This now is not considered performing it in the proper time. It's not gonna be considered adat. Rather, it will be considered qada. Now he's not making it in the proper time. Rather, he's, he has to make it up. Rather, he, may, he has to make it up. So the prayer that is qada, that is ada, is not like the prayer that is qada. You need the, the, reward, the obligation for the prayer to be performed in the proper time. Inna salata kanat ala mu'minina kitaban mawquta. And ya mafrudha fi awqatin mu'ayyina. Fi awqatin mu'ayyina. The verity of the salat has been prescribed upon the believers at specific times. At specific times. So the one who performs it in the specific time, he performed it ada'an. And the one who the time passed on him and he did not perform it for in that specific time, he performed it qala'an. Qala'an. So this is the case. So al-ada is the opposite of, uh, of al-qala. is the opposite of, of al-qala. So therefore, he has to make it up right away. He has to make it up right away. If he caught the prayer before the sun rises, one rakah of that prayer, then he caught the prayer ada'an. And, and if he did not catch one raka before the sun rises, then he has made al-qadha. He made up the prayer. Likewise with the sunset. And it's been corrected by al-Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, man, ad, man adraka min as-subhi rakatan qabla an tatlu al-shams faqad adraka as-subh. That whoever catches one raka from the morning prayer before the sun rises, then verily he caught the morning prayer. وَمَنْ أَدْرَكَ رَكَعَةً مِنَ الْعَصْرِ قَبْلَ أَنْ تَغْرُبَ الشَّمْسِ فَقَدْ أَدْرَكَ الْعَصْرِ And whoever catches one raka from Asr before the sun sets, then verily he caught Asr. And in one raka, meaning one raka, what is intended to catch one raka. And he made that, he made that raka, and uh, in that time, then he has performed that prayer. And some of the wordings of, of this narration, فَلْيُتِمَّهَا And he then let him finish it. Then let him finish it. So even if it's in this time uh, where it's almost a time of prohibition, it's allowed. And he will, if he remembered and he woke up and he just has this brief period, then he'll perform it in that manner. Then he'll perform it in that manner. And, and, and this is the case. And this is the case. The people of knowledge, they mention uh, about uh, al-qadha. They say, al-qadha'u yahki al-ada. Al-qadha'u yahki al-ada that making up the prayer it is exactly like performing the prayer. It's exactly like performing the prayer. So if somebody missed a prayer in the nighttime and he remembered in the daytime, he will perform it as the prayer is, meaning he will recite out loud. He will recite out loud. If he uh, is making up a prayer from the daytime and he remembered in, in the nighttime, then he will perform it silently. He will perform it silently. If he's traveling and he forgot the prayer while he's traveling and he remembered while he's traveling, then he will make the prayer up shortened 
if it was from those prayers that are shortened. But if he did not remember until he got to his residence, then he'll make it up entirely. He'll make it up entirely. So this is the issue here, Al-Qadha'u Yahki Al-Ada. And there are a number of narrations to clarify this. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he slept uh, on the prayer before. Uh, and this occurred in their traveling in, in a journey. And uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Arrasa. And he stopped in his travels at the end of the night. It's called Ta'ris, to come down and from the travels and to relax uh, at the very last portion of the night. So they're tired. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he asked who will, who will stay up for us and, and wake us up you know, for Fajr. And Bilal, radiallahu anhu, he took on this, uh, this obligation and he stayed up. But then oh, it just so happened that he dozed off, radiallahu anhu, and no one woke up until until the sun had rised, until the sun had rised. And this is in a hadith of Abi Qatada in Sahih Muslim. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he ordered them, and he, after they woke up, to, he ordered Bilal, ثُمَّ أَذَّنَ بِلَالٌ بِالصَّلَاةِ He ordered Bilal to establish the adhan. فَصَلَّ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam رَكْعَتَيْنِ ثُمَّ صَلَّ الْغَدَاتِ فَصَنَعَ كَمَا كَانَ يَسْنَعُ كُلِّ يَوْمِ so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he ordered Bilal to establish the Adhan. And after they woke up, the sun has already risen. They woke up and the sun is high in the sky. And they missed the Fajr. They missed the Fajr. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam ordered for the Adhan. And then he prayed to Raqqa, the Raqqa, the Sunnah of, uh, of Fajr. And then he prayed the, the Fajr prayer, the morning prayer. And Abu Qatad, radiallahu anhu, he says, فَصَنَعَكَ مَا كَانَ يَسْنَعُ كُلِّ يَوْمٍ And he did the same thing he used to do every day. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam And he performed the same way He didn't And he missed the prayer Unintentionally So he didn't leave the sunnah Rather he kept the sunnah He prayed the sunnah And then he prayed the The fajr He did the same thing Even in, in this situation They made the adhan And the aqam And the lengths in, in, in a similar manner And it's been uh, In a similar manner As if they are And he performing the prayer on time As if they're performing The prayer on time Likewise it's been narrated From Ibn Mas'ud Radiallahu anhu Another narration Similar like this uh, Allah knows best It's a different circumstance uh, Allahu alam But he says Radiallahu anhu This is the time of, uh, of Hudaybiyyah Of Hudaybiyyah And then uh, they, 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 they say A similar situation happened And Bilal likewise He was required uh, To uh, wake them up But this time yani, The Prophet Sallallahu alayhi wa He woke up And he said Ifa'alu kama kuntum tif'alun Do the same thing Y'all used to do do the same thing y'all used to do. So he said, فَفَعَلْنَا So we did what, he, what we used to do. And when you wake up for Fajr, you prepare for Fajr, you pray the Sunnah of Fajr, and then you get ready for Salah. And he said, the Prophet so told him to do the same thing you used to do. And he said, and then the Prophet وسلم, he said, فَكَذَلِكَ فَفْعَلُوا لِمَنْ نَامَ أَوْ نَسِيَا And like this, you should do the one who he sleeps or uh, the one who sleeps or forgets. The one who sleeps or forgets. So then he'll make it up the same way. He'll make it up the same way. And, he, and, and this is the issue here the, uh, of the, the missed prayer. And the missed prayer also is called al fa'ita, Another vocabulary word that we can take, al fa'ita, And the plural is al fawait al fawait Min fata yafutu. Fawtan wa fawatan. al fawait jam'u fa'ita. And this is the prayer that's been missed. This is the prayer that's been missed. So we see here, the one who missed the prayer unintentionally, it's an obligation for him to make it up. And the people of knowledge have agreed about that. As for the one who delayed the prayer on purpose, as for the one who delayed the prayer on purpose, uh, and, he, and, and, and he intentionally, he knows the time, he does not have no, no intention to gather the prayer, or he does not have no shubha, for example, he thinks he's sick, he can't pray until late, later, or the sick person, he can't pray, or, or he didn't have a shubha, for example, if he didn't have wudu, he thinks he can't pray. La, he, he intentionally, he, he left the prayer and the time for the prayer on purpose. On purpose. The time goes on purpose, and he told himself he's not going to pray until the time is finished. Wariyadu billah. The people of Nanas, they differed about this person, and the majority of the scholars, and from them, al al Arba, uh, Abu Hanifa, and, uh, and Malik and Shafi'i and Ahmed, Rahimahumullah, all of them they agreed that he has to make it up. All of them they agreed that he has to make it up. That he has to make it up. But some of the people of knowledge they mentioned that he, that he doesn't make it up. And, and if he made it up, it will not benefit him. It will not benefit him. And some of the people of knowledge they mentioned, that even this person here, if it's one prayer, he disbelieved. This is one of the statements, and therefore he shouldn't make it up. The only thing he should do is repent. 
And the, 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 the four imams or the jumhur, they mentioned, and likewise, he'll have to repent. He'll repent and he'll make it up. If he delayed the prayer on purpose without any excuse until the time passed, then he will uh, repent and, and he'll, it, it's an obligation for him to repent from that and to make it up. Uh, but some of the people of knowledge, and from them, Sheikh Ibn Bas, he mentioned that, no, if he, if he left it on purpose, there's no making that up. And this is the opinion of some of the people of uh, uh, Ahl-Zahir, and also the opinion of Ibn Hazm. And Sheikh Ibn Bas, he mentioned this, and likewise, Sheikh Uthaymin, he mentioned this, he will not make it up. He will not make it up, rather, because it is, this is too great that he made up. And he, on purpose, he left it with no, with no, with no any excuse whatsoever. On, on purpose, this one, he, and he, they have mentioned he disbelieved. Allah knows best in any of the case. Some of the people of knowledge mentioned that if he left a lot of them, then he will not make them up. But if he left one or, or a few of them, he'll make it up. And he, but in, in any case, uh, a believer, he will not do that. A believer, he will not do that. What he other be like, he seek refuge with Allah, as I would judge that he would ever leave the prayer on purpose. This, this is, the, the, in his mind, in his heart, this is a major thing, that he will never leave the prayer on purpose. That he will always pray on the proper time. And he will strive to do that, no, no, no matter what situation he's in, and in the limits. And if he, if he has a reason for combining them, he'll combine them. Or whatever situation he, he's in, and there's ease in the religion. So there's a legislation that's easy, alhamdulillah. But he will never delay it on purpose without any excuse, for no, for, for no reason, and until the time goes. And uh, Allah knows best what, if he should make it up or not make it up. And he, but just to clarify the, the dangers of that affair, that some of the people are not as mentioned just with one. Just with one prayer like this that he disbelieved. And so some of the people of knowledge would consider him a disbeliever. And therefore that which a disbeliever does, the only thing that will rectify his affair is to repent and to start praying. And if he did that, then uh, that which has proceeded would be removed. لِأَنَّ islam يَهْدِيمُ مَا كَانَ قَبْلَهُ At Islam, it removes everything that happened before. So there's no, there's no making that up. Yani on, the, on, on that opinion. Uh, and Allah knows best. In any case, if a person, he, he, he left it, on accident, then he, he makes it up in, in this manner. He makes it up in in this manner. After this, the after this, the author he says, "وعن جابر بن عبد الله رضي الله عنهما أن معاذ ابن جابر رضي الله عنه كان يصلي مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عشاء آخرة ثم يرجع إلى قومه فيصلي بهم تلك الصلاة." He mentioned uh, a narration from Jabir ibn Abdullah رضي الله عنهما that Mu'adh. He's narrating on Mu'adh. Uh, Mu'adh ibn, Jab ibn Jabal radiallahu anhu, he used to pray with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Isha al-Akhirah. Isha al-Akhirah. And they have Al-Isha al-Ula and Isha al-Akhirah. Al-Isha al-Ula is Maghrib. Al-Maghrib. Al-Isha al-Akhirah is the, the Isha that we know, the night time. So the, they used to consider Maghrib Al-Isha al-Ula, the first Isha. And in the night time. And then the Thani, or the second, and Akhira, the later one, which was, which is the, the night prayer that we know as Al Isha. So Mu'adh, radiallahu anhu, he used to pray that prayer, the Isha prayer, with the Prophet. Wasallam. And then he would go back to his people. He would go back to his people in Al Awari, and he would lead them. And he would lead them in the Salah, in that same prayer. He would lead them in the same prayer. So here, Mu'adh radiallahu anhu, he prayed the obligatory prayer of Isha with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam behind him. And he's praying as a ma'mum. And then he would return after that to his, to his tribe and to his people and to his neighborhood, radiallahu anhu, and he would lead them in the same prayer as an imam. He would lead them in the same prayer as, uh, as an imam. And we have uh, a number of benefits in this narration, likewise, and some more vocabulary. Yeah, some more vocabulary. The issue here, or the main issue here from this narration, is the issue of Salat al Muftarid Khalifa al Mutanafil. So we have al Muftarid, min iftarada. Al Muftarid, yani the one who is praying al Fariza, the one who is praying an obligatory prayer. He's called Muftarid. يعني اسم فاعل من افترض يفترض فهو مفترض المفترض من من يصلي ها الفريضة والمتنفل من يصلي النافل النافل the one who's praying an non-obligatory prayer so this is some more vocabulary with regards to the chapter of الصلاة المفترض and المتنفل المتنفل الذي يتنفل يعني يصلي النافلة so here we have the issue of the the imam he's praying Nafil. He's praying a non-obligatory prayer. 
and uh, we have the and, and the ma'mum behind him is praying an obligatory prayer. Is praying an obligatory prayer. We understand the issue. Yeah. Is this allowed? Yeah. <laughs> it's very clear, huh? This is what is happening in the time of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muad, he's doing this. Muad, he's doing this. Muad, he's praying the obligatory prayer behind the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then he's returning to his people and leading them in, in the same prayer, in the same prayer. So therefore, he's leading them while he's praying uh, a nafil, yani salat al nafila. So he has intended. To, to now to pray the prayer again as the Imam, but he is praying it as a non-obligatory prayer. And they're praying behind him at, and they're fulfilling the obligation of, of Al-Isha. So we see Jawazu Salat al Fariba Khalfa Man Adaha Yani Min Qabal Yani Man Adaha Min Qabal Yani that person he will pray an obligatory uh, an ob obligatory prayer behind somebody who already prayed that prayer. And he's praying that prayer with the intention of uh, a tanaful. And Jawaz al Muftarid Khalfa al Mutanafil. And this is the case here that a person he could be praying uh, an obligatory prayer behind somebody who has the intention to pray a non obligatory prayer. To pray a non obligatory prayer. It's clear. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, alhamdulillah. We have some narrations from Ibn Umar, radiallahu anhuma. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said, Latu salu salatan fi yawmin maratain. Do not pray a prayer in one day twice. Collected by Abu Dawood. And another wording by An Nasai, he said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, la tu adu salatu fi yomin maratain." That the prayer should not be repeated twice in one day. The prayer should not be repeated twice in one day. And also in another wording by Al Bayhaqi, la salata maktubatan, la salata maktubata fi yomin maratain. That there is no obligatory prayer in the in the day twice in the day twice. So how do we understand the, the narration now? Uh -huh. The niyyah, ahsant, ahsant. So that the niyyah had. Okay, what does that mean? With the same intention, you can't do that. Ahsant. This is the case here. So now we have another issue. It's called Iyada to Salah. Iyada to a Salah. Min Aada Yuridu Aid Iyada Ten. Iyada to Salah Al Wahida. And so here we have uh, Mu'ad radiallahu anhu. He's praying that he's making Iyada. He's praying Isha twice. He's praying Isha one time by, behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and then another time with. His, his people as an imam. And here the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا تعادوا الصلاة مرتين في أي في يوم مرتين. So the, the people of knowledge from them, Imam Ahmed and also Ishaq ibn Rahuya, rahimahum Allah ta'ala, they mentioned that what is intended by these prohibitions here is that he will not pray the same prayer with the same intention. And he will not pray Isha, for example, one time and then go pray Isha again with the intention of Isha as an obligation. He, he will not pray Isha uh, one time uh, to fulfill the obligation with the intention of the fard and then go and pray the Isha again in the same night with the same intention of Fard. He will not do this. He will not, this is the prohibition. As for repeating the same prayer with a different intention, like Mu'ad is doing, radiallahu anhu, this is allowed. This is allowed. Do you understand? So now he's praying the Fard behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa with the intention of the Fard. And then he goes to his people and he leads them in the same prayer with the intention of Nafil. So now he's not falling into this prohibition because the prohibition is with regards to the intention of praying an obligatory prayer twice. La salat al maktuba fi yom al-maratain. So he's not intending the salat maktuba. He already intended that behind the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And now whenever he leads his people, he's not intending the maktuba anymore. Any of the obligatory prayer. Now he's intending the non-obligatory prayer. Now he's intending the non-obligatory prayer. So all of this is allowed and all of this is permissible. And this is the evidence here for, for that. This is the evidence here. Uh, for, for, for this So uh, a person If he already prayed And he came to uh, the masjid For example if he prayed at home And then he came to the masjid And the Muslims are praying Behind the imam He will not sit and watch them He will not sit and watch them And he will not say Oh I already prayed I already prayed he will, he, 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 I already prayed Like this Or he will, for example If so, maybe he will uh, Be moving He will pray in one masjid and then he'll leave and go to another masjid for, for, to meet somebody 
or for a class or for a lesson uh, or, or for whatever the reason may be. And he'll pray the obligatory prayer in one masjid and then he'll even go to another masjid and he'll get there and they're praying. He'll get there and they're praying the same prayer. What would he do? He will join them. He will join them and he will pray behind them. It's been narrated from Yazid ibn al-Aswad radiallahu anhu uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Hajjat al-Wada' uh, they, they, they prayed in Masjid al-Khayf and they prayed the morning prayer. They prayed the morning prayer and there are two men. There are two men who came and they did not pray with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet is leading them in prayer in the Masjid in Hajjat al-Wada' and the Masjid al-Khayf and there's two people in the back, they didn't pray with them. They didn't pray with him. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after he prayed, he said, Aliya bihima, bring them to me. Bring them to me. And he so it's mentioned in this narration, Fajia bihima, taru'adu fara'isuhuma. And he from the khuf, that they're broad and their shoulders, the 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 uh farisa, this part of the shoulder right here is shaking and he quivering because they're afraid. And the, they, they prayed and they didn't pray. And then the, the Prophet Sallallahu called for them. So they came and they're afraid. And, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he questioned them. He said, ما مانعكما أن تصليا معنا? What prohibited you, you two from praying with us? And he first, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't accuse them. And he, what did he do? He questioned them. And he, what, what is your excuse? What, what prohibited you from praying with us? And, he, and this is the way of a believer. If he sees something that's not correct, he will not automatically accuse the people, but rather he will ask the reason and for maybe a person he has a legitimate excuse. Maybe he has a reason or a purpose and it, or, or something that would free him from blame. So therefore a person before he blames and finds fault and, accu and accusations, then he will check. What prohibited you from praying with us? They said, O oh, Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we already prayed in our homes and in our tents. We already, we already prayed in our tents and then we came here and you're praying. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, فَلَا تَفْعَلَا Don't do that. إِذَا صَلَيْتُمْ مَا فِي رِحَادِكُمَا ثُمَّ آتَيْتُمَا مَسْجِدَ جَمَاعَةٍ فَصَلِّيَا مَعَهُمْ He said, if you already prayed in your homes, and then you came to the masjid and a congregation, and they're praying, then you pray with them. Then you pray with them. فَإِنَّهَا لَكُمْ نَافِلَا And it will be a non-obligatory prayer for you. And it will be a non-obligatory prayer for you. So now we have the opposite in the picture or the, 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 the issue of Mu'adh. So the opposite is here. Now the, the Prophet is ordering them to pray a non-obligatory prayer. Behind the one who's praying, the obligatory prayer. That's one benefit. Another benefit is that the, the, if, if somebody prayed the prayer, same prayer twice, which one is the obligatory prayer? The first one. The first one. Because the Prophet وسلم, he said, he said, if you already prayed and then you come to people praying and you pray with them, then pray with them. This one will be considered nafila. This one will be considered nafila. So the first one is the obligatory. Even if a person he prayed by himself and then he caught the jama'ah and he, for whatever the case was, he prayed by himself, the obligatory prayer. And then he caught a jama'ah, then the jama'ah is not obligatory for him. And he, the, 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 the jama'ah is not obligatory for him. And he, Nafila, fa'inna halakum nafila. Nafila is not obligatory. Uh -huh. What do you mean by sunnah? We know, we know, sunnah means different, different meanings. Yeah, nafila. Uh, nafila. The Sunnah prayers, they're, they're, they're nafila, but some of the Sunnah prayers, uh, for example, there's a nafila mutlaq, a nafila mutlaqa, that's what this is. A nafila al mutlaqa. That has no, it has no purpose, no, no, no specific reason. No specific reason. Some of the Sunnah prayers, they have specific reasons, like duha, uh, or, or like the Sunnah before Fajr. These are specific, non obligatory prayers. These prayers are called nafila, but they're mu'ayyina, they're specific. So this one here is not specific. Yeah, normally. Normally, you you pray the norm, uh, you you pray the normal way. If you pray behind the imam, however he prays, that's how you pray. If you pray behind the imam, even if you're traveling, even if you're traveling and you pray behind the imam who is muqim, uh, then you pray the way he prays. For for example, if somebody's tra the, the the chapter of traveling is going to come, but anybody it's mentioned now, so. Yani if somebody's praying, um, he's traveling and he caught the imam in the masjid, and for example, in the last rakah, and he, he prayed one rakah with the imam. 
Some people may think he's, always, he's traveling, so he'll stand up and pray one more rakah and he's good. La, la. If the musafir, he catches the imam, he's praying behind the imam, he will pray and he, and he caught him. Yani a, a rakah from his prayer, he will pray the, the prayer of the muqeem. He'll pray the prayer of the muqeem. Naam. But do you understand though? The, the, the intent of nafila here is a nafila mutlaqa. Yani that, that it's a non-obligatory prayer. It will be a non-obligatory prayer for him. There's another benefit here, any yani that... Uh, uh, it is permissible in this situation likewise to pray the non-obligatory prayer in the times whenever it's prohibited because from the times it's prohibited to pray is after the the salat al-fajr if somebody already prays salat al-fajr it's not allowed for him to pray again until the sun rises la salat ba'd salat al-subhi hatta tatru al-shams hadith is authentic there's no uh, fajr there's no prayer after the fajr prayer until the sun rises but this is an exception here this is an exception here. So if you are, and the Prophet ordered them at this time, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ordered them at this time. They already prayed, and he, and he said, don't do that. If you come and they're praying, then pray again. And this was at Fajr, at Fajr time. So he's telling them to repeat their prayer and to pray a non-obligatory prayer, in the lakum nafila, in the time when it's prohibited. So this is an ex- ex- exception from that rule. An exception from that rule when it's, and it's permissible. And he, uh, again, similar like in Tahit al-Masjid. It's a reason for the prayer now. The non-obligatory prayers are allowed to pray in the, the prohibited times. Any yani those prayers that have reasons. And this is also from the evidences of that. This is also from uh, the evidences uh, of that. After this, the author, he says, وَنَا نَسِبِ لِمَالِكَ نَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ أَنَّهُ قَالْ كُنَّا نُصَلِّي مَعَ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ فِي شِدَّةِ الْحَرِّ في شدة الحر فإذا لم يستطع أحدنا أن يمكن جبهته من الأرض بسط ثوبه فسجد عليه In the author he mentioned now the narration of Anas ibn Malik رضي الله عنه that he said uh, we used to pray with the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم in the severe heat in the severe heat and if we were not able to uh, put our foreheads on the ground firmly meaning for sujood and because the, the ground is hard uh, hot because the ground is hot, then uh, we would uh, spread out our thobe, our garment, and we will prostrate on that. And we'll prostrate on that. If uh, he said we used to pray with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fi shiddati al har, in the severe heat. Uh, in the previous class, we had the hadith Abi Huraira in Al Ibrad. In Al Ibrad, how, how can that happen? If it's severe heat, they'll make it broad. So, so Possibly. Well, I don't know. That's what the people of Nauras mentioned. Uh, that uh, all, although they will make a broad, it's still hot. It's still hot, but it's not as hot as it was before. It's not as hot as it was before. I mean, the, the, there's no contradiction here. They would st- the, even if the Prophet ﷺ made Ibrad, sometimes maybe the, the, the ground would still be hot. It would still be hot. So he would make Ibrad wasallam. but here the narration here is that even if it's still hot, or even if they prayed and it didn't make Ibrad, for example, in any case, if the ground is hot, sometimes they would pray like that. Radiallahu anhum. And uh, if they were not able to prostrate and put their heads firmly on the ground because of the severe heat, then they would stretch their thobe out, their garment, and they would prostrate on their garment. So still do it in, in, the time period. in the time period yeah. of Dhuhr. Yeah, of yeah, Dhuhr. The Ibrad means to delay it uh, later yeah. in the time of Dhuhr, closer to Asr. The point is here is that even at that time, even after the delaying it, and he, it's still in the time, not delaying it out of the time, but delaying it later, it still maybe sometimes was hot, even after they delayed it. So it's hot, but not as hot as it was before. Nah? It's, and this is the case here, and Allah knows best. So they would, uh, they would put their thobe there to prostrate upon that. So the people of not as they mentioned about uh, this issue here, is that it's disliked to prostrate with the head uh, on something. Uh, on something is to 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 put your head on on, on something there. You need to prostrate upon it. Any from that the clothing, something from the clothing, like a a taqiyya, like this, like the hat, or like a shimag, or, or whatever it may be, or to put something from the garment there, 
that is disliked. It's disliked to cover the forehead in the place of prostration. They mention with regards to the toes and the and the knees and the hands. They're, 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 it's not disliked. Any, any, you, you can have a garment. You can have socks on, gloves on. There's no blame if one needs to. And the knees, they don't. They, there can be a garment there, of course, discovered. So that would be on the uh, on the garment. But as for the forehead, it's disliked. The scholars they say it's disliked to prostrate uh, with something from your garments on that spot. So a believer, whenever he's praying, he will not have his head hat down like this, covering his prostration and prostrating on the on the head. Rather, he'll raise his head, and so that his forehead, likewise the woman on a khimar, that 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 uh, she she will the, the place of prostration on the forehead it should be on the ground, it should be firmly on the ground. There should be nothing there. And the evidence for that that is disliked is that here that they would only put something there from their garments whenever it was severely hot, meaning that the norm, normally they do not do that. Normally they do not do that. So here the people of knowledge they mention the issue of prostrating a sujud al ha'il, a sujud ala al ha'il to prostrate on 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 a barrier that's something between you and and the ground, something between you and the ground, to prostrate uh, on something with your forehead. When we say prostrate, we're talking about the place of prostration on the forehead, to have something between the, the person praying and, and the ground. Uh, and and uh, the people of knowledge, they mentioned that that ha'il, or that thing that will be between the, the forehead and the ground is two times. One of them is completely separate from his body. Al-ha'il al-munfasil, al And this one, there's no blame in that, alhamdulillah. To, to, to pray on a carpet or to pray on a, a mat and the likes like this and even the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he prayed on a, on a mat and, and the hadith ha, have proceeded and he prayed with Anas in his hat and his house and Anas he prepared, he prepared a hasira for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and claimed it out for him and the Prophet he prayed upon that Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam so the people of Nala as they mentioned that this one here if it's completely separate from the body there's no blame in that except for in two circumstances. As Shaykh Sa'adi, he mentioned except in two circumstances. And one of them is whenever a person, he would specify something just for his head only. Just for his head only. And to prostrate for his forehead, just big enough for his head, not for his head, his, his head and his hands, for example, just big enough for his forehead to touch. And he mentioned the reason for this is because this is an imitation of, of the Rafidah. Yes, yes. Imitation of the Rafidah. And it's, it's disliked at the Shabbu bi ahli sharr it's not allowed to imitate the people of evil and it's no doubt that they are people of evil so therefore I need to be like that uh, a believer will not do that this one is disliked here this one is disliked here to, to, to select something specifically just the size of the forehead to prostrate upon that and it's similar to what they do with the Billah and the falsehood that they have likewise and the Aqidah they have behind that with the Billah uh, a, a falsehood anyone will not be that and not be like that and resemble them like that Yani, I remember now, subhanAllah, in the Masjid al-Nabawi, the Masjid al-Nabawi is all, it's all uh, tile, it's all tile, but there are rugs. So you would see them there, and they would stand on the end of the rug. They wouldn't stand back on the rug and prostrate on the, on the rug, they'll, they'll stand on the end of the rug so that their forehead would prostrate on the, on the, everybody is standing on the row on the rug, and they'll stand on the tip of the rug, yani, so that their prostration will be on the, on the tile, on the tile. Yeah, so in any case, uh, somebody who will not specify something like this. Another circumstance aside that he mentioned, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, is a person who prays on a mat because he thinks, and he has waswasa, and he thinks that there's like najasa on the ground, or he's afraid that there maybe there's possibly najasa here, and uh, from the waswasa and from the extremism and being meticulous and the likes like this, this one also he will not, this one is also dis disliked to bring a rug in, in case there might be najasa there. Any of the origin with regards to the carpet and the ground and the clothing and the likes like this and the areas that, that it's, it's tahara. The origin is that there's, it's, it's clean and it's pure. So somebody will not have the waswa. Maybe somebody you know, he dropped something here, maybe something spilled here, or maybe there was a kid here, or maybe, or maybe until the end of that. This is all from the, from the wasawas of shaitan. So a believer, he will not bring a, a prayer on a mat for that. But if it's other than this, and he prayed on a, on a carpet, uh, alhamdulillah, there's no blame. Uh, insha'Allah or he prayed on something that's not attached to him and there's no blame insha'Allah then the other case is if he prayed with something that's attached to him praying with something that's attached to him the people of not as they mentioned for example if he prayed on his hand when I say pray I, I mean prostrate well he prostrate on his hand if he prostrate on, on one of like put his hand on top of his hand and prostrated or if he put one of his hands down and he prostrate on his hand and not on this then the prostration is not correct the prostration is not correct. If he put his hand down and then prostrate on his hand, 
will put his hands down like this and prostrate on his hand. Even if it's hot, this is not correct and will not be accepted in the sujood is incorrect. And he did not fulfill the pillar uh, of prostration. But uh, the issue here, the issue uh, of prostrating on something that's attached to you, many from your clothing. From your clothing. This is the issue that Anas is clarifying here, the Allah Anhu. They only did that. Fishiddati al Har. They only did that when it's extremely hot. So therefore, it's disliked. It's disliked to have a shimag or to have something on the head covering the place of prostration and to prostrate on that if it's from, if, if it's from the clothing. If it's from the clothing. So if it's not uh, necessary, a believer he will not do that. If it's hot outside and, or it's very cold, likewise, if the ground is very hot or very cold, uh, likewise, he, he can put some, his garment there and prostrate on that. But the origin is that he will not do that, whether it's disliked with the majority of the people of knowledge. Now, Additional garment on, like a, like a jacket, and I put that down. Does it mean that also? Or no, 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 no. Um, we think about the wording. They say there's something that's muntasil and something that's muntasil. Okay. So even if it was a garment, but it's not attached to you, <laughs> meaning you're not wearing it. Somebody, for example, he put a, he had an extra throw, he threw it on the ground. This one is takes the ruling of the sajada. It's not connected to you. So wallahu adam, that's the benefit of the wording of the people of knowledge. They say, uh, يعني, uh, whatever it may be. So if it's not connected to you, it's not attached to you by wearing it in a life like this, whatever it may be, inshallah, if it's pure, it's clean, alhamdulillah, you can prostrate on it. And there's no blame. But if it's connected to you, meaning you're wearing it, this is the one that is disliked. This is the one that is, that is disliked. After this, the author, he says, عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أنه قال, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يصلي he mentioned the narration of Abu Hurairah anhu that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said that one of you should not pray in one garment without having anything from it on his shoulder. Without having anything from it on his on his shoulder. And this is the wording here, ala atiqihi. The people of knowledge they mentioned that the majority of the uh, of the of the prince uh, of uh, of the nusakh of Sahih Bukhari and Muslim is that it says ala atiqayhi on his shoulders on both of his shoulders but there are some prints that have atiqihi and also it has come in Sunan and Nasa'i ala atiqihi meaning one one shoulder but the majority of the wordings or the or the, excuse me the majority of the prince the prince of Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim and mentioned on both of his shoulders on both of his shoulders so this narration here is related to uh, Satr al-Awra Satru al awrati fi salah And we know that uh, covering the awra and the privates is, an, is, a, is a condition of the prayer. Is a condition of the prayer. But the awra uh, of the person outside of salah is different from the awra in the salah. The awra of uh, a man and a woman likewise and a child. Uh, the, the awra of a person in the prayer is different from a person out of the prayer. It's different from the person out of the prayer. So... The majority of the people of knowledge have mentioned that uh, covering the shoulders, and for a male, covering the shoulders is, uh, is recommended. It's not an obligation. It's from the beauty of the prayer, that one should cover his shoulders. If he covered his awra, meaning from the, from the navel to the knees, this is what is uh, obligatory. This is what is obligatory. And the covering the shoulders is from the completion of that, and, or from the beauty of that. And it's not an obligation. But Imam Ahmed, uh, he mentioned from the likes of this narration, that rather covering at least one of the shoulders is is also part of the uh, uh, part of the the, the aura in the salat. It has to be covered. It has to be covered. And if he did not cover at least one of them, while he's able to, then his prayer would not be accepted. And this is the statement of the of, of uh, Imam Ahmed and likewise Sheikh, Sheikh Ibn Baz, Sheikh Ahmed al Najmi, rahimahullah ta'ala. He mentioned about this any any with regards to the one yani, who who is able to. If he's not able to, of course he's excused. If he only had one garment, yani because the Prophet sallallahu he told Jabir anhu that if he had only one garment, and he wrap it around you entirely, meaning on your shoulders. When can I, that if if it was wide, in kana wasian, When can bihi. But if it was tight, meaning the garment is not big enough, then use it as an izar, meaning a lower garment. And so he'll be excused in this circumstance here. But uh, the Hanabila and the, uh, from them, uh, or, or who follow this opinion, Ibn Baz, and likewise, yani, uh, as I mentioned, Ahmed and Najmi, Rahimahumullah, he mentioned that uh, the, the one who is able to, he must cover it. 
the one who is able to, and he must cover it, at least one of them. If he did not, while he's able to, yani Sheikh Ibn Baz and the Hanabi, they mentioned his prayer is not correct. His prayer is not correct. If he had the ability, and then he did not cover his shoulder in the prayer, and he's able to. Like, for example, somebody had one of those tank tops on, and his shoulders are exposed, and he has a jacket, or another shirt with him, and he just laid it down, and he prayed like this. While he knows, then his prayer, yani according to them, would be invalidated. Shaykh Ahmed al-Najmi, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned that the prayer will be correct, but he'll be sinning. And he, to, to invalidate the prayer, he said and this is something that requires uh, uh, more details to declare the believer's worship and validate it. And a clear evidence, a clear evidence. But as for the sin, then, then, then he's sinning with regards to this. So Allah knows best, this is the best opinion. That uh, the one who is praying, the male, if he's able to cover his shoulders, he should cover them. It's an obligation. It's an obligation if he's able to. And if he didn't, then he's sitting. His prayer is correct, but he's sinning. So this is from the beauty of the prayer and from the zina of the prayer. And, and this is the, the, the minimum amount. of A believer, he would not pray with his shoulders uncovered. And he will cover his shoulders. And Allah knows best.